Welcome to All Bodies on Bikes, the podcast, where all bodies are good bodies, all bikes are good bikes, and all rides should be celebrated. All Bodies on Bikes is a movement to create and foster a size-inclusive bike community. So join your hosts. I'm Maggie. And I'm Marley. As we explore the complexities of the biking world, help us break down barriers and create the world that we want to see. And don't forget that all bodies really means all bodies, not just larger bodies, but bodies of all sizes, ages, races, abilities, genders, sexualities, and beyond. Come along for the ride. Oh my goodness gracious. Is it Monday? It is Monday. It's a stormy Monday here in North Carolina. Marley, where where are you and what does your Monday look like? <laughs> I am currently just outside of Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado. Nice. Um, I think it's also going to storm here. I got up at five this morning to get into the park early and I saw sunrise and went on some height. Well, hike is a generous term for what I did. Uh, I went for a nice, lovely half mile walk around a lake and it was perfect. I love hikes like that. Um, cause I didn't bring like any of my 10 essentials or like, I don't know, any of the things you would want to hike in a national park. Yeah. So a half mile nature walk was perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm still on my kind of epic road trip. Um, I have about a week left and then I cannot wait to get home to see Daisy May and Lacey. Like, oh, kind of killing me. The dogs, the dogs always get you right in, right in the feels. Yeah. Seriously. It's sweet of them to be that mean. <laughs> and I need to give you a huge shout out because you did uh the podcast that came out last week with yeah. Laura Blythe. Is that how you say it? Laura yep. Blythe. Um, and that was phenomenal. I really loved listening to that. It's really fun to like listen to your own podcast when you're not on it. Um, and then the one that's gonna come out this week with Annika Wade, yeah. um, really awesome wrap up conversation there. Yeah. So thanks for holding down the fort when I have been uh gallivanting all over this beautiful country. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, teamwork makes the really dream fun. work, as they say. Yes. Yes. Teamwork does make the dream work. Um, do you want to read the bio for our guest today? Let's do it. I'm really excited it. to dive into this conversation. So Absolutely. Um, you've probably heard us talk about this wonderful human before because uh, they got us to D.C. earlier this year. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But today with us, we have Alyssa Proudfoot Siegel. Alyssa founded Radical Joy Riding in 2022 as a WTF focused accessible biking group in Washington, D.C., and has organized skill shares, beginner rides, and overnights to inspire marginalized cyclists to do what feels good in their bodies. As an organizer with DC Bike Party and Bikes Not Bombs DC, Alyssa strives to be the human embodiment of a no drop ride. She believes that bikes can save the world, and whether she's tinkering with her next bike project, teaching smart cycling classes, or leading biking adventures, she's always chasing that bike utopia dream. A Bay Area native who ended up learning how to wrench and winter bike in Minneapolis, Alyssa now literally only knows how to talk about bikes. She coordinated a free bike repair program during the George Floyd protests in the Twin Cities and has been car-free for three years. Alyssa was also a mechanic at the largest bike distribution and repair camp at Burning Man and is a contributing writer for Grease Rag Ride and Wrench Zines. Best of all, though, she's a super dorky All Bodies on Bikes fan and is so excited whenever she crosses paths with the folks at ABOB from the Swift Camp Out to this podcast here today. Uh, and in her grown up getting paid time, Alyssa fights for a bicycle friendly America and safe streets for all at the League of American Bicyclists. And that is. Uh, I could, I was picturing you while I was reading that. I was like, yep, that tracks. That sounds right. That's Alyssa. Yeah. Hey, Alyssa. Hey, I am obviously very excited to be here. If you couldn't tell from my giant bio. So <laughs> we love it. We're, we're well, excited to have you here. Yeah. And you've done a lot of really rad things for the community. Um, you know, it's funny, you read through that list and it's like volunteer, 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 volunteer. Um, those are the, you're, you're one of the people that makes the bike community go round. So thank you to start off for Absolutely. all of your selfless work. I mean, same to both of you. You're spreading the good word. So I'm here for it. Well, thank you. Um, so we met at the National Bike Summit, which happened in DC. And actually, that's kind of how All Bodies on Bikes got its big start was we were, Kaylee and I were supposed to go there a couple years ago at the beginning of COVID. Um, 
And then obviously COVID happened, but tell us about the bike summit. Tell us your involvement. Um, Tell us all about it. Totally. Yeah. The national bike summit is run by the league of American bicyclists and it's the premier bike advocacy event um, in the U S uh, we have advocates representing all 50 states gather to share stories, go on rides, and lobby on the hill for better biking for everyone. Um, and all of this is really cool. And we have a bunch of amazing speakers. But honestly, my favorite part is the connections that are made at the Bike Summit. Um, I've been unofficially dubbed the fun director for the summit, which honestly Perfect. is such a sweet gig and is a ton of work, but I get to bring amazing people like you two to the summit to spread the word about um, things in the cycling community that maybe isn't in the mainstream, especially for traditional cycling advocates. So we have groups like DC Bike Polo do a bike polo demonstration, or we have a intro to Alley Cat Ride, which is so much fun. Um, and we have things like tandem training with the Metro Washington Association of Blind Athletes, which some listeners might know from your podcast. Yay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's everything all at once, a very concentrated few days, but it's a beautiful event for sure. Yeah. Also not to mention there's a huge amount of like lobbying and political advocacy that happens. Yeah. Um, so there's like an entire lobby day. Um, folks get to go meet with their legislators about really pertinent things that are happening in the bike world. Um, I think this year, a lot of it was on e-bike legislation, yep. if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. Um, and so it's a lot of fun, but it's also um, just a really cool opportunity to actually make a difference to other people who are riding bikes. Um, and so the League of American Bicyclists, y'all are a nonprofit, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We're actually the oldest national advocacy organization for bikes in the U.S. We've been around in some form or other since 1880. So wow, we amazing. were originally the League of American Wheelmen, name change in the 90s for some reason. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, in some form or other, we've been fighting for bike advocacy since the dawn of bikes, essentially. So, uh, very cool work to work with. Super, super cool. And you're currently based in DC, right? Yep. Yeah. I've been here, um, almost three years now. So, um, as a West coast baby, it's weird to end up on the East coast, but, um, definitely a different experience than I expected. Yeah. Um, well, I guess let's talk about biking. Um, it sounds like from your bio, you were involved in, you lived in Minneapolis prior yes, to DC. Yeah. So mm -hmm. biking was not new to you in DC, but how did you get into biking? Yeah. I, biking actually was not a big part of my life until adulthood. And especially until I moved to Minneapolis after college, um, I kind of got adopted into the messenger community um, through friends. Um, and then very soon after I was hired on as a mechanic at a tiny community bike shop called Recovery Bike Shop with very little mechanical knowledge, they were very happy to train me on, which I think is a very magical experience, um, especially considering the fact that that was the only shop in the city and honestly the only shop one of the few shops I know of in the U.S. that um, is primarily women trans and non-binary folks that are working there um, so I got amazing help um, to become the mechanic that I am today um, and then from there, I learned how to winter bike uh, in Minnesota, which was an experience in and of itself, um, primarily through Grease Rag, who uh, runs a winter Skillshare every year, who inspired my now DC baby winter Skillshare. Um, and then I got into community organizing work through all of that. Um, 
uh, especially when uh, George Floyd was murdered and COVID hit and suddenly bike shops were essential businesses and we had to figure out how to navigate that new world. Um, and so I fell in love with biking and it's all been downhill since <laughs> since that. I <laughs> sold my car when I moved to DC and I've just been biking full time and it's been beautiful. You That's say amazing. downhill like it's a bad thing, but I love no, it. <laughs> <laughs> downhill like it's a it's a very good thing I was like, thinking because like if anybody else said downhill you'd think bad but then you get exactly. in a group of cyclists and downhill yeah. and you're like no just put your full face helmet on and go I was like wait <laughs> do it <laughs> yes <laughs> um it's really funny Alyssa I was just in Minnesota literally until yesterday I went up to uh Cuyuna to do some riding oh, um awesome. but it's funny how these things come full circle because what was it? Five, six years ago, um, I met. Um, is it? I, I'm totally blanking on their name, but the person who um, organizes grease rag bikes. Um, oh, Lo, yeah, mm -hmm. Lo. I yep. met them in Montana at this bike summit and was just blown away by their intentionality and real activism. And that's definitely somebody we should try and get on the podcast if we can, because yes. um, they are doing some really groundbreaking, um, eye-opening things, especially with grease rag bikes. Um, and we'll have a link to that in, um, the, the show notes, but, um, they just did one on the bo uh, body issue talking about, you know, different size bodies in cycling, uh, which is right up our alley. But, uh, yeah, that was just to say, it's funny how these things come full circle. Yeah, exactly. And I, it, I love how the cycling community community, lovingly steal so much from each other and I feel like so much of what um what radical joy riding is is that I couldn't find the grease rag experience mm. in DC and so it's like I guess I'm starting it so um so much of that is uh is such a great like connection piece right like being able to see what everyone else is doing and even just like seeing what people are doing on Instagram or like on their personal sites like it's so inspiring to be able to say oh like actually I can do that where I am too yeah well we've let's, mentioned let's... radical joy writing a couple times why don't you tell us a little bit about it I say yeah, let's dig in a little bit more about that <laughs> yeah yeah um I mean, it's really cool because Radical Joyriding, I originally founded because I felt like there was a gap in the D.C. cycling community, um, especially for a uh, women trans femme focused group, something that's accessible. Um, we have amazing groups like D.C. Queer Rides, but, you know, it's um, different facets of the community. Um, and I think being able to find a ride that was chill and uh, focused on togetherness and hanging out and happening to be on bikes um, was something that I, I I felt like was missing. And it's really cool because now we also have an All Bodies on Bikes chapter um, in DC. So we're just like totally taking over the market. Um, yes. But we... Um, uh, with Radical Joy Riding, we do um, skill shares, overnights, beginner rides. Um, it's intentionally focused toward um, bringing people from where they are to where they want to be, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if someone says, I'm scared of riding on a road in D.C. for the first time, we'll put together a skill share to say, okay, like what is our first road ride going to look like? And then we all do it together. Um, and so it's kind of been built around community requests and then things just kind of took off from there. Now we do the beginner overnights are really popular. Who knew everyone likes to go bike packing. So um that that's something that we've really been focusing on and have some rides in the works for the fall. Um, but yeah, it's kind of all over the place in the best way. 
shifting gears a little bit because you're also an organizer for DC Bike Party. And um, how is that different than Radical Joyriding? Um, and I have so many questions about DC Bike Party. Um, but I guess just what is it? What does it look like? How do you join? All those things. Totally. Yeah. Um, DC Bike Party is a part of the Bike Party Network, which um, there are a lot of bike party rides that are all over the U.S. But as far as I know, we are consistently the largest bike party in the U.S. Um, it's a monthly ride around D.C. It's about 10 miles, super slow. There's a midpoint dance party, and we typically yes. end at some kind of establishment, a restaurant, or a bar. Um, this past year, we've been averaging somewhere between 800 to 1,000 people per ride. And so we've been having a lot of fun conversations about growth and how to manage that and keep everyone safe. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I love someone in the org used the, use the term leaderful as opposed to leaderless. We're a leaderful organization. Um, and so it's a huge group effort, obviously, to put on that kind of ride every month. Yeah. Um, but it is first and foremost an event to spread the joy of biking to those who are on the ride and not on the ride. Um, we have a ton of people who do the ride on bike share bikes. We're going like um, like maybe five or six miles an hour top nice. speed because there's so many of us and we take over the entire street. Um, and we take over the streets because the streets belong to cyclists. And so though we're not quite as political, I'd say as critical mass, it is intentionally a political act to be able to, be present and be visible and mm. be with a group that keeps each other safe. Um, it's quite an adventure every month. 800 Damn. to a thousand people. That's yeah. ridiculous in the best yeah. way. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That's a, that's a lot. Um, I used to do a similar party type ride in Seattle and I eventually stopped because it became unsafe for me personally. Um, sure. you know, it became a very alcohol focused ride. Um, mm. and I don't know how other cities handle their, their party rides or whatnot. Um, but, um, I'm glad to hear that you all are actually having conversations about that because that was another reason I quit the ride that I was doing is because it was intentionally, um, leaderless. I'm saying that in quotes, there were definitely folks who had leadership, whether it was formal or not. Um, but I'm curious, like, how do y'all handle, um alcohol on the ride you know how do you handle conflicts with motorists um do you have any best practices for other cities who might be struggling with the same thing Ooh, I mean I am not an expert by any means I feel like there are so many people in the group who are much better at de-escalation than I am um we have noticed anecdotally that we can um how do I put this? Um, weaponize our put together cis white dudes um, to uh, have more of those car interactions, and that tends to go better. Um, it's not always a perfect system, for sure. We do get aggressive drivers each ride. Um, but that being said, it's um, we get a lot more people who are excited than we do get those aggressive drivers, which is great. And when we do have those conflicts, a lot of the volunteers are prepared and techniques to kind of talk them down. 90% mm. of the time, if you go to someone's window and say, hey, sorry, we're going to be like five minutes in this intersection, like there were like a solid chunk of people so it's not really like people can weave their way through um so usually usually people get that logistically they can just turn around if they're really upset about it um as for alcohol drug use of course it happens um we're definitely not there to police people's decisions but that being said because it's such a large group of people um 
the the intentions on the bike party ride for people are so differing and like there are a ton of people I know who are sober who come and hang out with the sober people and have a great time and there are also people I know will bring their alcohol and be riding with their containers open and you know that's also fine and so um we've been moving I think as we grow um, and we seem to keep growing and growing, which is the most amazing problem to have, um, we have such a diverse group of people and people from all corners of the city and all walks of life all coming to just chill on their bikes together. So people will be able to find their people within that. I love that. Um, and I, it sounds like because of the intentionality, um, you guys are really being proactive, um, in helping keep those, those conflicts at a minimum. So my fingers are crossed that it continues that way. And there's no, uh, bad apples that ruin it for everybody. Definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I have talked about hating the term party pace. Um, it sounds in, in the radical joy writing, you know, on your Instagram and, all that you're very intentional about describing the pace as a slow roll. Um, why do you pick those words? Yeah, I um I actually just recently listened to uh you on Slow Guy on the Fast Ride. Um, and so I actually just heard about that. Um I, you know, I feel I I definitely get where you're coming from. I feel like everyone's party pace like is different I I feel like if if I'm saying that like I have to watch out for myself a lot of times when I'm going on different rides with other people because I'll um I'll be riding with my friends who are much faster than me and they'll be chilling and I'll be dying and so um it's really interesting to see the range of what people can do and want to do. And so I think it's totally illegitimate to want to move away from party pace as like a term. Um, I do feel a little sad about it because I love um, party size cycling. I don't know if you follow them on Instagram or anything, but it's a group out of Highbridge, New Jersey. And um if they didn't coin party pace, they had to be one of the first to use it. But um, I I think saying slow roll um, removes some of the party aspect of it in like a good way. I, I think when you talk about partying and cycling, I do think that there's that like bike party mentality of like oh there's gonna be a ton of people with alcohol or there's gonna be like um there it's gonna be something a little bit more intense than what I am thinking it is so I I think being able to use slow roll while it does have still some of the problems of like what's a slow roll for people um I, I think it does give a little bit more space and of course on all of my rides I'm really intentional about um putting a pace range on there on each specific ride and so um I have most of my rides are either 8 to 10 or 10 to 12 depending on whether it's like a beginner or an intermediate ride so um being able to let people know exactly what to expect and then sticking with that um is something that feels important to me because I feel like that's very important to someone who's maybe nervous about going to their first ride and um, feeling left out. Yes. Preach that yes. gospel. Um, <laughs> I, I wrote an article a couple years ago now um, about how to make your ride actually inclusive. And you basically just outlined it exactly, you know, give it, give the pace description, say what skills are needed, uh, you know, what to expect, all those things. So, Thank you. Um, and yeah, I love party size cycling. Um, they, their logo is really fun. They do some really fun things and, um, we'll put a link to them in our bio. We should also have them on the podcast. Definitely. Um, 
it's really fun because it's led by a man who lives in a bigger body. So just yep. a little bit of a different perspective of one that we we don't typically get. So, yeah. Well, I honestly, the next question is maybe just because I'm personally curious, um, but I've seen several pictures on your Instagram of you on a bike and you're pulling this. It To me, it looks like a U.S. postal mailbox behind you. And on one side, and I think yellow letters, it says rage. And on the other one, it says love. And I just, I had to throw that question on there because I need to know what that is and what's happening. <laughs> totally. Yes. Um, I am the unofficial bike party sound bike representative. Um, so that is one of our massive speaker rigs that we use for bike party and adjacent rides. Um, that whole thing is filled with to the brim with these giant speakers um and it's it's really like so I haven't actually weighed it someone told me that it was like 150 pounds which feels right okay. um it's pretty absurd but uh we actually share it with a group called Extinction Rebellion here in DC okay. um they are like a protest group that is uh, fighting the climate and ecological crisis through like protests and nonviolent direct action here. Um, so they use it. Um, they use it for their protests. You can plug a microphone in and uh, okay. get yourself pretty loud. Yeah, um, but it's a it's a pretty impressive machine. I feel like um, when I ride on bike party, I get <laughs> probably like a 10 foot radius behind me of no people because I think that someone would definitely lose ears of their hearing if they got too close. So <laughs> um, definitely bring the vibes. Um, yes. And I learned how to like make playlists and now I have to listen to new music and do things like that so it's definitely um definitely helped me shape my uh music listening skills too so that's amazing so what's the what's the number one tip to picking out a good bike song oh that's a good question Maggie thank you yeah it definitely depends bike party has a theme every month Okay. Um, so that definitely helps because the music always goes with the theme. Of course. Um, last month we did, um, we did a beach party. Okay. Um, so lots of different beachy, beachy songs. Um, I, I think being able to have a good mix of things that are danceable and things that, um, things that are well known. Uh, like thrown in there a little bit mm -hmm. just so you can um, really reach everyone in the crowd. I also am really into throwing in like cringy 2000s pop hits you forgot Great. about. Yes. That always seems to be a crowd pleaser. Yep. So. That was You know that song, um, the, the Icona pop one, like I drove my car to the bridge. I definitely have had that on a bike party playlist. <laughs> that is one of my favorite cycling songs. Like I can be going up a hellish hill and it'll come on and I just like find energy out of nowhere and can ride. It's, <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. yeah. I've also noticed that like angry punk music does it for me like some mm. days, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. it's kind of depends on the vibe. I feel like I bike with music now and it's like totally uh, especially when I'm commuting, I feel like it's revolutionized like my relationship with the world and cars and being able to like kind of get out of my head a little bit. Nice. Um, well, speaking of, kind of want to shift gears into talking about biking in a city um, because I think that's one of the most frequent things I hear from folks is, well, I would do it, but I'm scared too. Or, you know, when folks go to D.C. or New York, um, the bike share, Chicago even, the bike share systems are so good. But for folks who aren't used to it, um, there's some definite barriers to feeling comfortable. Um, I guess this is kind of a multi-part question. Um, you know, for folks who are nervous about biking in the cities um, or are, you know, they live in a big city and are thinking about switching their commute to biking, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I could talk about this for hours and hours. I I feel like there's so many people that are like 
90% there, you know, like, oh, I would totally bike only if X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like there, there are so many good things that you can do. Um, finding a group, I think is one of the biggest things, uh, whether it's some sort of organized group that, um, is like all bodies or radical joy that is, um, is really, uh, inclusive, really, um, really intentional about having those more entry-level rides. Super awesome. Um, being gentle with yourself. I feel like people forget to do that. I hated biking in the city when I first started. I was like scared shitless. Like I was like, nope, not for me, never for me. Um, and obviously that has aggressively changed. So I think like being patient, being gentle, understanding that it is a hard and scary thing that you are facing and it's something that you'll have to overcome. Um, I think learning your route and route planning is super helpful. Um, whether it be you tracing your route in the bus or on the Metro or you walking portions of your route just to be able to see what's going on um, in that part of the city look at the traffic flow, look at how intersections are working, um, just to like prepare yourself. Um, and then just being patient, um, giving it to yourself a little bit at a time and not freaking yourself out all at once. Um, I think those deep breaths help a lot, especially with, um, having those, close car encounters because it's especially biking in the city every day it's gonna happen um but being confident and knowing knowing your place knowing where um where you're supposed to be and that the roads are for you too um is something that's really I feel like that has changed my perspective really to reclaim that space. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. Um, I, I don't have anything to add. Um, listen to Alyssa. She's got the, uh, the knowledge. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> kind of on that same note. Um, uh, I imagine, well, when we were in DC, Maggie and I were there, we got, we rode bikes and yep. we saw the white house and we saw, yep. All sorts of stuff, which isn't that crazy. But what is the craziest thing you've seen in DC? I imagine there's all sorts of things. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like I see crazy things every day in DC. Um, I feel like it, for anyone who hasn't experienced a bike party, I feel like that just, we have to go back to that. That is like such a beautiful thing to behold. Um, I, ooh, um, I loved biking through um, when Roe v. Wade was overturned, um, being able to bike to and through the protests and see everyone there on their bikes um, together in solidarity. Um, yeah. I feel like there was something so tragic and wonderful about being there and being in the center of everything and seeing hundreds of people all mourning together. Um, I, I think that that was something that was really maybe not crazy, but uh, definitely an experience. Yeah. Um, and just like, I feel like being on your bike exposes you to so much more than if you were in a car. Um, just even like, the amount of times I run into someone I know on my bike on a daily basis oh, wow. like, yeah. feels so feels weird, but it's just because like you, there's like 
the main cycle routes and if everyone you know is on a bike then like they're so much easier to find and it's like oh I know that bike I know that person and more often than not if I go out on a bike ride I'm gonna end up seeing someone I know which is like this beautiful wild thing that's like part of this multifaceted community that exists here in DC because of bikes yeah bikes are bikes are community and uh communities formed via bikes so yep. um okay we have one last question before we get into our two last questions that we ask every guest um so i'm gonna let maggie ask this one all right perfect scenario money's not an object time and distance aren't an object there's nothing that is a, an object <laughs> Um, what would you most like to see out of the work that you're doing with the summit radical joy writers and the DC bike party? Oh, that's a lot. (laughs) Um, I don't know. I think it's both infinitely complicated and simple. I want Mm -hmm. biking to be the accessible, safe option for everyone. And for the people who biking as a, a reality I want an accessible safe option for them to get around without a car whether that be you know passenger rail or metro or being on the bus that is frequent and goes everywhere and um isn't subject to redlining and like all of these things that um like make a city what it should be I feel Mm -hmm. like you know wars war on cars makes it makes the case the most succinct like cars ruin cities and you can really see that and I I think all the time on my bike like man this would just be like so amazing if the sidewalks were wide enough for people to actually walk on and I didn't feel like I was going to get hit by a car every five minutes, you know, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. I, I just feel like there's a better option than car dependency and to achieve some semblance of that in the U S would like make my heart so happy. Me too. Me too. I would have to say, because DC was the first place I've ever gone and like biked around the city because like i'll usually pick a greenway and go ride the greenway and be like man that was a pretty greenway uh and then we just were biking around dc and i was like i've i've been here before and i thought i had seen the cool things but seeing it from that perspective is nine thousand percent different than seeing it any other way you can do it um so yeah that's that's the goal that's the dream yeah yeah now when i go to new york i put my bike on the train and I spend a couple hours on the train and then suddenly I have my bike and I'm biking around New York I feel like that's like such a different way to see a city and to breathe everything in and to be able to stop and see whatever you want to stop and see I, I think that's just having that bike joy experience I want everyone to be able to experience that Yep. Yes, definitely. Um, oh, Alyssa, I could talk to you for hours because um, we are so aligned on so many things. And it's just it's fun to imagine the possibilities of a world where biking is normalized and accessible and um, easy. So thanks exactly. for thanks for having this conversation with us. Um, but before we let you go, we have two questions that we ask every guest. Um, so the first one is, what does your dream day on a bike look like? Yes. Okay. I was ready for this. I've been I'm done. excited. <laughs> um, I feel like it's the weekend. I've slept in a little bit, but not too much. Um, I bike with some friends and my husband to a coffee shop and a couple bookshops. And then uh, we go out to nature. Uh, so go on like a rail trail uh, to like a mm-hmm. swimming spot do some swimming and then eat a big ass meal and watch the sunset that sounds perfect it does right yeah this is the yeah. question every week where i want to do like a little like we need a little soundtrack like because you're just like 
it's the weekend and you just you need little birds and then this little like guitar thing to come in yeah. you know what i mean just exactly. every time somebody starts yep. talking i'm like i hear a soundtrack in my mind how do we get this onto the thing i mean we have a podcast i think we that can make perfect. this happen right i think, I think so allowed. yeah we'll figure it out we'll figure it out yeah start yeah. soundtracking everybody's perfect day on the bike exactly yeah <laughs> and then our last question you get to talk about bikes a lot what is something else you wish you got to talk about more that you wish that people asked you about more? Um, I thought a lot about this question and like all of the really weird things that I do that aren't bikes. Um, I really want to tell people about the family of crows that I accidentally adopted. Um, they, I, I've lived in the same apartment for three years now and I live on the 11th floor and I have a balcony okay. and there's a tree right next to my balcony. And so I started feeding a couple of crows peanuts, um, yeah. like just off of my balcony. And then they decided we were friends and they had their babies in the tree next to our balcony. And now I am the crow, cre crow queen and there is like this massive family of multi-generational crows that come and hang out on my balcony every morning and come get peanuts and they all have like their own personalities and like are super different and you can tell they're like super smart and so now I'm the weird crow lady and I'm so into it I love that for you <laughs> yes do they ever bring you like gifts I've heard of crows like bringing people little trinkets or little piece of trash honestly that they find but it's like yeah a they brought me like trash I'm still waiting for it I heard someone like on the internet say that they had their crows like steal dollars from people for them which I don't know like the ethics of that but I'm into it it's an option <laughs> honestly yeah. Line. yeah yeah listen we're um, stealing from mother nature let's let her steal back for us exactly <laughs> Um, well, things. Alyssa, where can folks um, find information about either um, the League of American Bicyclists or Bike Party or uh, Radical Adventure Riders? Heck yeah. I um, So Bike Party and Radical Joyriding are... Oh, I totally called it the wrong thing. I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's Brain. very decent. <laughs> <laughs> Our, we're both on Instagram is the best way to follow us. Um, and then League of American Bicyclists is also on the Instagram, but we also have like a real person website, uh, bikeleague.org. And we are also a grassroots organization that is primarily member based. So if you feel inspired, um, we'd love to have you as a member. Awesome. And we'll have links to all of that in the show notes as well, um, along with all the Instagram and um, try and put down all the different things we talked about. We've we've spread a lot of knowledge this episode. So thank we you. Have. Yeah. yeah. Um, and before we go, um, Maggie is doing a really cool thing that I want to give them a chance to talk about. Um, they don't like this. I can tell by their face, <laughs> but um, they're fundraising for- a really important cause. Yes. Um, so tell us about that, Maggie. Yeah. So I, every September, uh, since 2019, I participate in something called the Great Cycle Challenge. Uh, I started it in 2019 because in March of 2019, my best friend in the whole wide world uh, lost their two-year-old after a fight with cancer. Not to a fight with cancer, because we're always very careful about those words, because she kicked cancer. But, um, but I found out about this organization. It's what got me into cycling. Um, and so the goal this year is to ride 300 miles and raise $5,000 for pediatric cancer research. Um, the majority of treatment for pediatric cancer was passed after only doing trials on adults. It is the most underfunded area of cancer research in all the different kinds of cancer there is, mainly because older white men don't get pediatric cancer. So it's not funded well. So we're going to go out and we're going to ride bikes and we're going to change that. Um, so if you would like to keep up with what I'm doing slash 
donate, donate. or just yeah send words of encouragement but donate especially um you can find my particular profile at greatcyclechallenge.com slash writers slash maggie low one and we'll have that in the notes so you don't have to remember all of it because i usually can't but yes and it's also on your instagram yes um and we'll make sure we put it up on the all bodies on bikes instagram as well yeah um because it's a super important cause yep. and something near and dear to us for sure absolutely cool well thanks for a great episode friends heck yeah and be safe have fun and next time I talk to you, I'll hopefully be home in Arkansas. Woo! Oh, yeah. Woo! yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alyssa, thank you again. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was amazing, as it always is when I get to talk to y'all. <laughs> <laughs>this is an all bodies on bikes podcast powered by feisty media the show is produced by maggie and marley and edited by the team at feisty media thanks for listening